I want a partner in my life. I, I want a family and a home before it's too late, which, which it may already be. I understand. Can you help me with that? You're telling me you don't want therapy, Mia. But you've come to me for help, and you know therapy is all I have to offer. I think what we have to do is look at the kind of choices that you've been making up to now, and why you haven't found... Okay, I, I, how long does that take? I, how old am I going to be then? I think you came here for a reason, Mia. Not just to talk about last week or last month. I think what we need to do is... You are not listening to me. I Doesn't don't have time for that. Doesn't it feel like we're in a similar position to 20 years ago when the clock is ticking and you need to take action? I know you feel I failed you back then. I know that. But if I offer you some kind of quick fix that you know I can't deliver, it's going to end the same way, Mia. You'll feel angry, you'll feel let down, like you did before and like you did with Bennett. Bennett? It doesn't sound like Bennett was ever going to give you what you wanted. What happened was painful, but not really surprising. It was almost set up to fail, Mia. And if I were to go along with your request to find you a man, that would be a set up too. I, I, I have to go. Well, thanks. Would you like to come back next week? Why? Because, like you said, I, I owe you. That's, that's not what I meant. What, what did you mean? Oh, I meant you owe me a child, Paul. That's what you owe me. Mia ends the session by blaming Paul for an abortion she had 20 years ago. Being a good lawyer, she begins the session by building her case, by establishing the impression that her memory for that time is crystal clear. You know, it's funny, 20 years ago, I was in Brooklyn, you were in the city, and now it's the other way around. Oh, that's, that's true. You have more light in here than you had in your old office on 10th Street. Yeah, that was... That was a long time ago. It's strange to be back. This couch is better. The old one was, uh, blue with black pillows. Hmm. You have a good memory. I thought it was funny. She had a black and blue couch. Really all started 20 years ago. You mean when I was your therapist? I was wondering, all these years later, now that you know how it turned out, what do you think about that pregnancy? What, what do you think? No, no, Paul, what do you think? Seeing me last week did it make you question that decision? No, seeing you only made it worse. So you've been struggling with this for some time? You know, it's ironic. I, when I was looking at your, your, um, your case file, I did the math. Your wife was pregnant at the same time I was, but you thought that I should get an abortion. You think I wanted you to get an abortion? It was a mutual decision. And we made it together? How did we do that, Mia? Yeah. Um, I was 22. You were my therapist. I was getting ready to go to law school and I got pregnant and you didn't think I should have it. And what told you that? Oh, come on. Maybe you can remind well, me. Well, why don't you look over your old session notes or have you not even kept those? You sound, you sound kind of angry. Well, I, you know, you, you appear to have forgotten the whole thing. The, the, the gift that I gave you and, and the decision that we made. I, I don't... Forget it. What is the point? Obviously, we can't bring the baby back. But we might both learn something if we, uh, if we talk about it. It seems to me that we may have different perspectives. There are facts. And what would they be? You challenged me constantly. Did I, did, I, did I want to give up law school? Was I ready to become a parent? Did I want to get married? And what were the answers? You thought it would ruin my life. Is that really what I said? I do remember talking to you about your anxiety in relation to beginning law school and separating from your family. And uh, I think uh, you had doubts about your boyfriend at the time.
time. He was a musician, right? A drummer. Yeah. You think his timing would have been better? It's a joke, Paul. I, I get it. What was his name again? Stevie. He fixed cars during the week and did gigs on the weekend. I'd follow him around to all these dives. He had this beautiful long hair that would go flying everywhere. But you know, everyone said, he's a musician, mechanic, he's not for Mia. What did you think? I think I loved him. And I, I let him go. Do you know what that's like? He was right there, next to me. What, what were we thinking? That somebody better was gonna come along? Somebody my, my family liked? And now, now I'm here and this is what I have. And I wish I could go back. To what? To that moment, right before I lost him. You were there, Paul. Maybe this is why you wanted to see me, Mia. To go back. To go back to that moment and try to understand it. Yeah, what happened? I missed it. I don't remember how, how Stevie felt about all this. Oh, he didn't even know I was pregnant. Huh. Yeah, the person I told was, was my father. He was great about it. He was completely supportive. In what way? Well, I mean, he was upset about it at first, of course, but then, you know, he said whatever I wanted to do, he, he'd be there for me. We even made a list of the pros and cons together. He did everything. He, he, he found the doctor, he paid for it. He took me to the appointment. You remember him as being so, so perfectly there for you, so, so present. And I was the one who let you down. He even arranged for the abortion. Yeah, of course he did. So I wouldn't have to. You know, I don't think you told me that 20 years ago. Do you know why not? I didn't come here to talk about my father. We're fine. How many... Fathers and daughters have as good a relationship. And you're still very close. Mm -hmm. In fact, he called you t twice when I was in the office. Yeah, I mean, is there something wrong with that? It's better than fighting all the time. But you wish you were as close to your daughter. You haven't mentioned uh, your mom. Oh, she didn't, she didn't know about it. <clears throat> you didn't tell your mother that you were pregnant? No. That's kind of striking. And, and your father didn't tell her? No. So, so it was a kind of a, what, a secret? Just between the two of you? Oh, the three of us, because you knew. Okay. Were there any other secrets? All girls have secrets with their dads, that's normal. Like, um, like what, for example? Um... Well, my dad left the apartment before I woke up every day to go and open the store. So I never got to see him anymore. Did that make you feel um, important? You know, my, my poor dad in that awful store every day. He paid for law school. Mia's memory has apparently been clouded by her father's extreme possessiveness. It's now up to Paul to help Mia recognize that it was actually her father who pressured her into getting the abortion.